Eccoci di qua. Hey. Ok, riprendiamo le minutes. Comunque, per il discorso ah, non stata, penso che la cosa migliore sia partire tutti da Milano, perché stavo guardando con il sito che mi ha consigliato Pietro, soprattutto per Bologna, Max deve fare un sacco di cambi e costa l'ira di dice. Va bene, per... quello che ritieni più opportuno, Adria... eh, Marcello. No, 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 solo per informarvi, per anche Torino, visto che ha, ha pochi diretti. Ah, io in realtà ho KLM. Sì, avete KLM, sì, eh... Eh, però eh, diciamo che dipende a che ora vogliamo arrivare. Cioè, da quello che ho capito, ehm, Adriano ha detto per essere lì lunedì e essere lì martedì e, e andare via sabato. Eh, se mi specificate un po' meglio le fasce orarie, stringo ancora è indifferente, di... è indifferente. Quindi anche che sia la sera tardi o... Beh, la sera tardi eviterei onestamente, però... Ecco, c'è da capire più che altro se il buff noi lo dobbiamo allestire lunedì. No, il buff lo allestiamo martedì. Ok, ok. Ok, allora anche se arriviamo tardi lunedì non ci sono problemi. Già mm -hmm. questo ci dà dei vantaggi economici non indifferenti, eh, perché ci sono dei prezzi più bassi. Ok. Chi arriverà? Oliver. No, c'è anche... Sì, sì. Ci dovrebbe essere anche Max. Direi che l'incontro per vivo e platform engineering sarà il tema di un. Non ho capito. No, dicevo, il de... se facciamo l'incontro la... dal vivo per platform, dico faremo il... la serata a tema di un. Mm. Yeah. C'erano anche quelli di Kirtek. Sì, poi ho visto che quando hai citato SIGAP c'era uno sviluppatore di SIGAP che ha messo il cuoricino. Sì, non avevo chiesto a Nardiello se potevamo inserirlo. Mi ha detto di sì, che tecnicamente si è fattibile. In realtà ho parlato anche con Ro, ehm, Leonardo Romanato, che aveva senso citare Crateo perché loro lo utilizzano. Mm -hmm. Però era una cosa molto, 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 come si può dire? Bottom What's line. Hi, hey, Maxine. Oh, hey, Max. My man. How do you do, man? Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Crystal clear. Uh, hello, hello. How are you? Uh, good. Long time. <laughs> good, yeah, good. <laughs> good. Ara <laughs> show, ara <a> show. <laughs> yeah. Tired as fuck. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Where are you now, Max? In Lithuania still. Mm. Yeah. Think, thinking about moving to somewhere warmer, maybe Cyprus. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> This yeah. year. Yeah. By the way, you... Know? you uh, mm -hmm. please, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Don't worry. Um, just want to say that Cyprus is the most fucked up country I ever heard because in normal country, 
the more salary you got, the more you pay taxes. In Cyprus, that's quite vice versa. So they have like a 50% discount on all your income if you had a salary larger than 55,000 a year. Wow. Okay, okay. that is packing its luggage. Right <laughs> <laughs> you know what also because in italy we got mesmerizing tax rate i was talking with my mates at h proxy and mm-hmm. the overall taxation is something like 76 percent and 76 percent is insane oh god it's taxes taxes yeah well, keep in mind that you got the income taxes, also the regional taxes, local taxes, mm. and also sort of pension tax. So you are paying for your retirement. It's not a tax, obviously, but you are forced to pay that. Oh, God, I was crying about 30% taxation in Lithuania. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're lucky. You're a lucky one. <laughs> I uh, think uh, only France is worse than, uh, than our current system about taxation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Italy has very steep taxation, but you but, know, it's, it's based on, come si dice, il sistema scalare, Dario? Cioè, a, I don't know a, how to translate a, a scaglio, a scaglioni. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there are some levels. <laughs> so you're going to pay something like 20% from 0 to 20, mm-hmm. then 25%, 20 30 and go on so okay. it's not yeah. like, it's the not opposite of uh, cyprus the, opposite. the more you earn the more you earn. <laughs> <laughs> so my my friends from cyrus cyprus said that their effective tax rate is about 18 or 19 percent overall it's all taxes they pay from this from their income and they say what <laughs> 18 19 18 yeah 19 percent of their overall taxes and they say what guys you've got a good weather You've got uh, like a sea nearby <laughs> and you pay 18% of taxes? Uh, you know what? We are paying so much taxes in Italy because we got wine, we got pizza, we yeah. got good food. That's the reason. Uh, and, That's a a good reason. Of, uh, oh, and a lot of old people. <laughs> and also a lot of mafia. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, sorry uh, for that word. All right. anyway. and the, um, for the in all of these, we have to say hi to Oliver. <laughs> Let us join uh, us. My bad. We were talking. Yeah, we were doing chit chat. Uh, nice to meet you, yeah, no Nikita and Ricardo and also Oliver. Hi guys. Hello. Hi Nikita. Hi Carlo. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, we were talking about taxes. <laughs> yeah, we're... Yeah. yeah, I'm jealous of the 18% taxes. Very taxes. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cyprus. Cyprus. Cool. Okay. okay. Thanks Bye. everyone for joining. Yeah. So uh you want to go ahead, Nikita, or you wanna you want me to to Say hi no. to everyone. <laughs> so, uh, 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 but yeah, think... so basically, we're excited to have you here and you know, and I hear about your, the capsule project and learn more about it. Learn the, um, the progress uh, of the project over time or, or the community, you know, whatever information you, you, you can share. And, you know, if you have some, some uh, information about the technology and sure. what you're thinking, you're taking the project. Uh, yeah, um, yeah I, I can go over if you don't mind, Max and Oliver. Yeah, that's great. Right. Awesome. So, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Dario. I'm from Italy. So we were talking about taxes, so you know that. <laughs> anyway, um, Capsule has, was born during the pandemic 2020 because I was working at Classics. So Classics is the company behind Capsule because we were looking for a solution to offer a sort of container as a service based on Kubernetes. Uh, we had that customer that is still uh, our customer, by the way, that was trying to offer these container as a service solution. They started investigating Ranger, OpenShift, and other solutions, but much of them were really opinionated and they weren't providing a real proper uh, multi tenant environment. So we designed a proof of concept uh, in a few weeks and that's why, uh, that's how Capture was born. And we started engaging with the community. We released that in open source mode. So the customer was really happy for that because in the end, you know, with the open source, you're getting a lot of 
free stuff in the end. So you got development from the community, feedback from the community, feature requests, and so on and so forth. And we started implementing this project because we noticed that in Kubernetes, there is a missing gap regarding multi-tenancy. It means that we all know that with Kubernetes, we can have a single namespace. Uh, multiple users can create multiple namespaces, but there, are, there is a missing gap because if you think about also some resources offered by Kubernetes, like the resource quota, uh, the resource quota allows to set a maximum amount of resources that a namespace can consume. Um, yeah, we are going to do that. So the resource quota is living inside of the namespace um, boundary. So if I have a shared environment used, used by multiple tenants and I need to enforce a resource quota uh, at the tenant level, with bare Kubernetes, I cannot do that. So the solution prior to Capsule was you can create multiple clusters. So each tenant is going to use its own cluster. But this is really cumbersome to manage in the long term because it means that you have to control, to manage the control plane and you're missing out also uh, the uh, sync feature. So maybe a cluster is running on 126 and another on 25. So you need to sync policies across all the tenants. Capsule instead is defining this abstraction name tenant and the tenant is just a collection of namespaces. So the users, they just need to authenticate against the API server and they can create namespaces. And automatically the namespaces are bounded to the tenant using the dynamic admission controllers. So we are able to intercept the request. We are mutating the namespace request, creating the owner reference, and then Capsule kicks in connecting the namespace to the tenant. And after that, uh, using the tenant definition, you can specify a set of rules. You can replicate resources like limit ranges, uh, network policies, because they are strictly required by multi-tenancy multi because you don't want to step, step each other toes um, in a shared environment. You can enforce also resource quota and resource quota are enforced at the tenant level. So we implemented a poor man algorithm regarding resource quota. It's There are some limitations about that, but they are working so far. So essentially you can create your slice of a Kubernetes cluster. And same time, you can enforce other kind of policies like adding additional metadata uh, to some objects. You can enforce the, pro the pod priority classes, the runtime classes, storage class, ingress class, so everything that should be used by that tenant. So you can create a sort of tiering of your uh, portion of the cluster. Um, we went open source right now. We are in the middle of the release of 0 to 0. Uh, we developed um, three versions of the tenant definition. We started from V1 alpha 1. Right now we are in V1 beta 1, and we are going to release V1 beta 2. And we added features um, from uh, from the community that was demanding that. And I'm really happy because we got also Max and Oliver. And right now they are maintainers of Capsule. I'm really happy to have them aboard. And they are also using Capsule in production. So maybe, I don't know, Max, Oliver, if you would like to talk also about the benefits of using Capsule. Sorry, uh, did you happen to have a, a demo? Maybe, I mean, yeah, it's... yeah, absolutely. I, I can go with a demo. Would you like to get maybe an introduction before for sure, Max for sure. and Oliver? Yeah. 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 And meanwhile, I prepared the demo. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hi. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. I'm Max. I am a lead infrastructure engineer in Wargaming. We are a, a, dev, a game dev company. Maybe you someone played our World of Tanks, World of Warship games. So yeah, we're using Capsule a lot. Uh, basically, uh, we are using Capsule in order to achieve multi-tenancy, and we are using it a lot in order to achieve bring your own device content. So for us, our tenants are basically our teams, and uh, each of our teams is using their own provisioned hardware to run their workload. And that's why how we help ourselves to get rid of a noisy neighbor effect by allowing them completely to run everything on their dedicated hardware. We've got a lot of infrastructure related to tenants. So tenants from Capsule already grown in and integrated with uh, a lot of our different systems so 
we have a different additional system which allow tenant owners to generate uh, airbag rules for end, end users uh, so basically for us capsule is a core concept of uh, you know, of managing and provisioning clusters and for now i think we have around have we have a different type of clusters so we provision the multi-tenant clusters and as well we also allow people to provision their own and to own their own multi-tenant clusters so that's how we achieve you know uh, Kubern uh, kubernetes multi-tenant kubernetes as a service uh, you know question so uh, uh like what what's uh the use case for your company is it like multiple multiple games or is it yeah Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a lot of different uh, game dev teams. We have a lot of different uh, infrastructure teams, like platform teams, who are developing components for games. And so, for them, in order to live independently in a shared cluster, tenants are really a super decision. So they can just uh, so we've got this tenant co the tenant concept not only in capsule but also in our companies. So uh, each team can have. Uh, can, you know, for us, tenants is something that bound, that bounds and responsible for some applications or components and the cost center who pays for the hardware and for the so on. So we have our another another system which is above capsule, which allows to manage these tenants, and then capsule and then these tenants can be provisioned to. Uh, different system like Kubernetes. We also use this tenants concept on our bare metal servers to be able to understand who is responsible, to whom we need to send alerts, and who is uh, paying money. And the capsule integrated in these tenant systems quite a, quite an easy way. Did you did you track the the cost for each one of these tenants, or uh, or is it through yeah. capsule or through, through something else? Okay, right. um, uh, as you know, each of our tenants has dedicated hardware, so we can use specific label. So we know that this tenant is belonging to cost center A, and then we wow. label all the resources of this tenant with this cost center label, and then we can calculate the total cost. And then we know we know who is which team is responsible for this tenant, and we can send alerts to the correct team, for Got example, it. for monitoring and for so on. Yeah, I'm just curious because um, I think there's some other projects too that are looking at uh, cost uh, management in Kubernetes, like uh, mm -hmm. I think one called Cube Cost or something. Cube Cost, yeah, yeah. But so Cube then, Cost is mostly for shared environments, and for us, we uh, each tenant has its own dedicated hardware, so we didn't, so we don't need to calculate exact cost. We just know that for these nodes, is paying cost center A. Got it, got it. But then, but then you you may want to have multi tenancy in a single cluster, maybe with even share hardware, right? Is that supported or not? We yes, share we have. Yes, okay. yes. There is a special pool of resources, and there is a special type of you know shared tenants which can use a resources. Uh, we can use a shared hardware pool. So this also can be done. That depends okay. on the. We know we we have mostly uh, as Kubernetes as a service. So this is like uh, our customers decide which type of tenant they want to create. They want to create a tenant which will use uh, their own resource pool, or they want to create a tenant which will use some type of a shared resource pool. Got it. I think, yeah, I think this is pretty interesting because um, you know some some companies have like um, requirements from some customers to. Um, I mean, not in the gaming industry, but in this, but maybe. Uh, in like the enterprise type of mm -hmm. customers, they want to have like um, separated environments, and then maybe they have some some sort of requirement, like compliance, maybe that that requires their data to be separate, right? So, if I mean, if you have a tool that kind of man that can help you manage all of these uh, different tenants, maybe in the, like where the data might might reside in different locations, or might reside in different, like say, AWS accounts, or or, or different clouds or yeah so so pretty interesting yeah mostly we've got a lot of machinery above uh, capsule which is uh, used to provision correct tenants which is used to assign correct labels for tenants and to generate the correct policy so but capsule is uh, you know like a cornerstone of this 
Uh, I have a slightly tangential question. So the Kubernetes upstream project has this project called hierarchical namespaces. Um, are you familiar with that? Or like, how does that yeah, hierarchical namespaces. I know, I know about them, but they, from my point of view, they are a bit hard to use because all this copying between namespaces, they have, uh, I just don't understand their multi-tenancy concept. <laughs> it's a bit, it's not so clear. Uh, if I need to copy something, you know, they had uh, like uh, this concept of uh, same correct, this concept of a, uh, you know, top namespace and then registers from this namespace are, can be copied or hierarchically moved to all other namespaces. That's not the thing that I want from a multi-tenant solution at all, because if I need to, to to generate these rules, I can use, for example, Kiverna, and we're using a lot of Kiverna rules to be able to, for example, generate, um, you know, things for a login cooperator for Banzai Cloud, flows for Banzai Cloud, login cooperator for each of the tenants. So Capsule is uh, uh, more, the concept of Capsule is much more clear for me. So the use cases of uh, these um, uh, tenants than in the hierarchical namespace project. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was like, personally also I find that very confusing, especially like it's a flight flat hierarchy that it's still easy to visualize, uh, but it can get on if you leave pretty fast. Yeah, maybe Oliver, just a brief overview of what we're doing at PEDAC. Yeah, sure. So our use case is uh, quite similar to uh, what Max said. So we are basically working for the local government of Bern, and most of our customers are uh, different development teams, which, for example, uh, develop taxation software or some other software or individual software. And we also uh, make the hosting for like sensitive applications or applications in general, which are used for all the workers of, of, of the government. Um, for us, we have more the concept of the shared nodes currently, because we don't have a lot of Kubernetes staff yet. So it's kind of difficult for us to, to maintain the platform. And initially we also wrote our own tenancy solution and then we migrated to Capsule because we, we can't develop actually. And right now we have just shared community pools, if, if you if you want to call them like that. And basically all of our customers uh, consume uh, the same hardware. But we are also moving towards the concept of having uh, dedicated uh, machines wherever they are running. So uh, yeah, the, the users can bring their own um, machines. Um, also, I, I like to think about Capsule more as of a framework that allows uh, tenancy. So as Max said, they integrated everything. And with Capsule, it just gives you the tools to kind of drill down into tenancy in Kubernetes, but you can still do what you need to do to, or what you want to enforce in, within your tenants. And the other great feature is the Capsule proxy, which is an add-on, which basically allows users to actually run list uh, requests against the Kubernetes API. Because that's normally not possible. Uh, if you have the list privilege, you could see all the namespaces. Therefore, either you see all or you can't list any of them. And basically, the Capsule proxy allows uh, to make these calls. And yeah. So it's a great solution. We have been using it for a year now and yeah, loving it. Thank you, Oliver. Sorry, you have <laughs> questions. Do you have any compliance requirements for it? Because you work for, uh, with the government or, or you don't? We don't have that much. So it's basically the data needs to be in our data center. That's mm -hmm. like the biggest compliance. And in certain stages, the devs shouldn't have access to certain stuff like secrets. Etc. But other than that, not that much. Got it, got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so I'm ready to start the demo, and I'm really sorry because let's try to debug then also a uh, capture proxy. Okay, I'm showing the screen. Let me move this one here. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. that's great. So right now I'm on kind. So because we are using that also for the CI for the development purposes. 
and capsule can be easily installed using the helm chart or the customize although i would suggest using the helm chart because uh, it provides uh, it's a more robust solution when you install capsule you are ending up with a list of crds so we got the capture configuration the tenants then we implemented we zero to zero so this is directly from master uh let's praise the demo god that everything is working as expected but capsule allows also to replicate resources across the tenants so the tenants uh the tenant owners so the people that will like to use uh a portion of the cluster can replicate resources across their own namespaces or rather I can automate the deployment and the delivery of resources across all the tenants that are matching a label selector so it's pretty similar to what is doing flux but you don't have to define an application for each namespace but rather you're saying I would like to target uh, specific namespaces of a specific set of tenants but uh, let's keep it simple so capture has been installed and everything is starting from the user so let's imagine I am Edis and I'm part of a group named capture.classics.io and I would like to know if I can create namespace and the question and the answer is yes because capsule is provisioning get cluster role is provisioning the namespace provisioner so it it grants uh, the permission to create namespaces to all the users belonging to capsule classic sayo and where it comes so it's coming from the capsule configuration it's a crd where we can define all the capsule configurations so the user groups is matching one of these one availables here so Alice is entitled to create a namespace in its tenant so far so good so what I can do is to say okay I'm Alice and I would like to create a namespace oil development uh sorry yeah my bad okay I want to create a development a namespace named development but I'm getting an error here because capsule is intercepting the request and it tries to do a sort of lookup saying which tenant are owned by Alice I don't have any tenant assigned to Alice so I'm sorry you cannot create a namespace so as a cluster administrator in this pane I'm going to say kubectl apply minus f API version capsule.classics.io v1 beta 2 kind is a tenant metadata oil but it could be any name and I'm going to set the specification to the owner's name saying that the user named Alice is owner of this tenant and as you can see the tenant has been created keep in mind that API resources tenants so the tenants is a cluster scope resource obviously because we are talking about the cluster wide level because we are grouping namespaces together and as you can see here now I'm entering in watch mode uh getting the tenant list and we got our oil tenant that is active we don't have any namespace quota and we don't have any namespace so far so now as Alice I can create my namespace and as you can see here automatically we got the binding between this namespace and the tenant and I can try to understand how it works if I edit the namespace or development you can notice here that we got an owner reference so we are using the owner reference to connect the namespace to a tenant and this allows us to take full advantage of the garbage collector and also the reconciliation process because if I delete some resources inside of the tenant that should be there capture is going to be notified and we are sure that we got a reconciliation so with that said now what I can do is to say let's try to put an enforcement regarding the namespace quota so as a cluster administrator I say your tenant cannot create more than namespace options three namespaces okay And as you can see here now we got namespace quota free and Alice 
and say, okay, don't worry. I'm going to create staging. I'm going to create production. Let's create the forbidden one and I'm getting an error. So this is the first feature that our initial customers were demanding and also the community, how to enforce a maximum amount of namespaces owned by a tenant owner. Keep in mind that we got here, we got here two kind of personas. We got the tenant owners that essentially are the ones that are creating the namespaces, Alice in this case, and then we got the cluster administrator. The cluster administrator is the one that is creating and managing the tenants. Please notice that I'm not using any uh, additional plugin, so everything is straightforward. We try to design Capsule to be totally uh, designed on top of the Kubernetes user experience. So we don't have any plugin. We are not requesting the tenant owners to create first an object uh, that is a CRD because we thought that the developers will like just to focus on Kubernetes itself. They don't want to study additional APIs and we want to keep the same developer experience that you can have on Kubernetes. Do you do you have a controller too, or 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 just CRDs? Or... Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a namespace uh, that is capsule system, but it's configurable. Where we are running our capsule controller manager. So there is the controller with the webhook because obviously we have to intercept requests, allowing some operations and so forth. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And. Um, Please go ahead. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned something about a capsule proxy. Like, so as a tenant owner, I can list the namespaces in my tenant, or something around listing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if uh, I'm really sorry because I'm not able to understand properly. Uh, so you are asking if Alice can get a list of namespaces. Yes. Okay. Uh, by default, if I'm Alice, obviously, um, let's say I'm Alice as group. Capsule classic SEO. Of can I create deployment in the namespace oil development? Obviously, I deployment. Obviously, the answer is yes, because we are granting the admin role to the tenant owners on each namespace. But obviously, if I want to get the list of namespaces, the answer is no. Why this? Because Kubernetes API design has been uh, modeled around the resource of resources. Okay. So it means that we don't have an ACL. We overcome that using capsule proxy. Um, sorry. This is work related stuff. So opening a new window. We develop an add on that we named capsule proxy. And this capsule proxy is a reverse proxy that allows to get the list of the tenant namespaces. So you're issuing a kubectl request. You got the ingress controller or maybe a load balancer. You're listening on capsule proxy and capsule proxy is decorating the request on behalf of the user, filtering the resources according to the labels. Why this? Because if you take a look to the get namespace show labels, you can notice that all the tenants namespaces are labeled with capsule classic SEO tenant oil. So what we are doing is to impersonate the user request. So user Alice, and we are saying you can get just the list of the namespaces with your label name. And there you go. And the result is the following one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is Lens. So you can connect to the capture proxy. You're authenticating using your OpenID Connect or your authentication mechanism. And the same applies also with the namespace. So maybe if you have patient, if you're patient, we can try to install capture proxy. And please, Max and Oliver, if I do something wrong correctly, because I don't remember how to install that. I, I, don't remember. I don't remember too because we install everything using Cargo CD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a big problem. So 
this is here it is okay should be this one oh it's tmax and it doesn't matter so let's go with with the studio code Okay, should be this one. Capture proxy. Let's install. Capture proxy charts, capture system, image pool policy. We can remove that. We can remove that. Survey type, node port. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We can go for a deployment. 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 And it should work. Fingers crossed. Let me check. It seems so. Actual proxy. Uh. Ah, it's pulling the images. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe. Oh, it's crashing. Looks like that. Yeah, but the proxy is working. So it's uh, because there is. Ah, uh, uh, my bad. Okay, my bad. Doesn't matter. So, okay, get jobs, but it should work. I don't remember how to install without this certain. I created the certificate in advance. So, capture proxy is listening here. And in fact, here it is. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is to create a kubectl port forward to this service. So kubectl port forward, capsule system, SVC, capsule proxy, 9001. And we should be able to card localhost 9001. Yeah, it's working. So far, so good. So now what we have to do is to create a kubectl for Alice. Um, I can create that because we got in the hack create user Alice oil. Okay, so this is the cube config generated with um, private key and certificate to access the cube uh, the cube Kubernetes cluster. And obviously, we are using the plain API server. In fact, kubectl version you see here. We are not getting through proxy. So now what I have to do is to edit this Alice, Alice oil cube config. And we have to say, you don't need to use this server. You need to use 9001. And I don't remember my cat, uh, cat root. Yeah, this one. I need to copy the certificate authority because I created a make cert certificate. So it's a subsequent one. Okay. Now we can simulate a user that is passing through the capsule proxy. Keep CTL version, it should work. Yeah, it's working. And now what I can issue is kubectl get namespace. And I'm getting just my namespaces. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. And keep in mind that capture proxy, obviously, is working with multiple resources. Keep in mind that when you're using a multi-tenant environment, it means that you got policies also on some cluster scoped resources. These can be search classes, ingress classes, runtime classes, priority classes, and capsule allows also using the capture proxy to get list of the entitled class you can use. So th these policies are in uh, a CRDs, right? They're in, so the proxy talk uh, with the CRDs to make sure that uh, yeah. it's enforced them or? Yeah, keep in mind that um, these policies regarding capture proxy are embedded into okay, explained in spec owners and we got the proxy settings. So for each owner, you can say, you can get the list, uh, you can create the, not create, no. Do we have create on capture proxy? Maybe no, I think. no, 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 we don't have, yeah. 
yeah, I don't remember. We got an enum here. So you can say Alice can get the lease of inverse classes, but maybe Bob, that is the co-owner of the tenant, cannot get that lease. So we are trying to build a framework. So we are not giving anything as granted. So you can build your own multi-tenancy uh, solution. So it's just a, just a, an unopinionated multi-tenancy solution framework. Sorry. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. And keep in mind that we got also uh, this website, Capture Classics IO, where we have multiple tutorials. Uh, the first one I'm thinking about is how to assign network policies, because obviously you want to create a logic separation and you want to avoid the noisy neighbor effect. Uh, you can enforce node selector with the tenants, and it's pretty straightforward because you just need to use k explain tnt spec node selector. So you can specify the labels and all the workloads are going to be placed just on the node pool uh, that is belonging to the tenant. Maxim uh, implemented this feature and we are taking full advantage of the node selector offered by Kubernetes 1.6. If I recall correctly, there is the scheduler or something like that. Uh, we are adding an annotation on the namespaces created by Capsule. But... So so the, the but the, this is only restricted to different nodes, or can you make network policies that are uh, with share tenants when when the tenants are actually sharing nodes? Uh, for it's example, it's up to you. It's totally okay. up to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can use shared pool, or you can use also your dedicated pool. We have also another end user that is from the Netherlands, and they're playing with Kiverno. And with Kiverno, they were able to create a sort of pipeline saying uh, you can use a shared environment, but if you're missing resources, you can use then as fallback your private node pool or something like that, or vice versa, I don't remember. But keep in mind that we are not sipping uh, each other too. Uh, we got, I think that also Max then told you that they are using Kiverno. And although there is a sort of overlap because we are talking about policies here, the two projects are playing very well together. Got it, got it. Okay. Right now I'm going to update my tenant. As a cluster administrator here, I'm saying, okay, keep CTL, edit tenant oil. And I'm going to say, I want to specify some network policies. And as a result of these, if I change the context, you can see that I got a network policies that has been created. And obviously what happens if I, tr if I try as a cluster administrator to delete the network policies, these are going to be created back by the controller. At the same time, you know, network policies are really important because they're preventing uh, a sort of privileged escalation because maybe I could try to reach out an endpoint that is uh, forbidden. Let's imagine I'm Alice as group capture with classic CEO, and I try to delete the netpole capsule oil. Obviously, I cannot because the capture network policies are privileged. So we are preventing from beginning a sort of escalation network escalation. At the same time, another feature that is really cool is the resource quota. Um, resource quota. Too many information. Oh my gosh. Should be. Oh my gosh. I don't remember. Uh, also name collision, search classes, network policies. Custom resources, custom resource quota. No, it's not this one. Additional metadata. It was with limit range. Yeah, resource quota, this one. Okay. So now I would like to assign a tenant quota. So I'm going to edit the tenant. Set paste. And I'm going to say, in your tenant, you cannot consume more than, let's keep it simple, nine pods, okay? So with that said, if I try to switch the context to 
oil development and I issue KIPCTL get resource quota, you can see that I got my resource quota. So what I can do is to create the deployment, my app Nginx, and I can scale uh, my deployment, deployment, my app replicas up to three. Mm. Oh, you're right. And then, as you can see, the resource quota, the resource quota has been updated. Then I'm going to switch in oil staging and I can create again my deployment and I can scale. The resource quota is free. Um, we need to wait obviously for the containers. Okay. Three of nine, yeah, so far so good. And now I can switch to production and I can create again my deployment and scale up to free replicas. So overall, I should have nine. Oh, my app, maybe. Uh, all namespaces. What's happening? Ah, my bad. My app work count. We got nine pods. And now we reach the tenant quota. In fact, if I try to create maybe a deployment named this time over quota, the deployment has been created, but obviously I don't have any pod because the replica set is complaining because capsule orchestrated the resource quota to make them tenant aware. So you are overcoming the problem of the fact that resource quota is namespace scope. Unfortunately, there is no cluster scope resource to enforce a selection of quotas for namespaces. And we try to implement on our own. We didn't implement uh, a new custom resource definition because we want to stick to the official API. Because in the end, Kubernetes allows you to set up your multi-tenant environment Capsule is just orchestrating in a smarter way all these resources together. And we can proceed with all the examples because uh, we are preventing uh, the creation of pods or persistent volume claims that are using a specific or forbidden storage classes. You can use also the node pools, runtime. They're pretty similar in the end, but just to provide a brief overview, so maybe we'll be more worthy trying to talk about capsule so i don't know let me know ricardo yes uh, yeah you don't have to go over all of them so i think it, they're all pretty similar <laughs> but i think it's you know great i mean the all the capabilities of the project and i think it yeah you know a lot of places will find it really useful yeah do, do you are you working with the uh, the other Kubernetes uh, group uh, that Nikita mentioned, or? Uh, we get in touch actually... from beginning with Adrian Ludwin uh, from the working group multi-tenancy. And we were planning to get their code base regarding the replication of resources. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, we tried to take a look also to the code base and it was too much complex. And we implemented our own solution using the uh, tenant resources. Right. Because also because uh, it, there were some limitations that honestly I don't remember. We try to engage with the community, but in the end, um, the underlying internals were too much opinionated for us. So we the were... replication of resources will be really a great feature for uh, tenant admins because you know there are a lot of uh, operators which are using uh, and where, where you can use where you can create a namespace scoped object. For example, there is a great. Um, external secrets operator, which allows you to integrate uh, with uh, different secret stores, for example, like Vault or yeah. uh, AWS secrets. And what's what is uh, uh, what is a good thing that you they have both uh, cluster scoped and namespace scoped objects. So in our use case, and we are waiting for for this new release. In our use case, the tenant admin will be. We have a special concept in each tenant. We has a special concept of a, you know system namespace in each tenant. 
So in our use case, the tenant admin will create uh, the, the external secret CRD in these special tenant system namespaces, and this uh, external secret configuration will be shared to all tenants' resources. And that's why they, you know, the tenant admin will work in this case like a small cluster admin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is great. I mean, I, I was just kind of curious that I mean, there, there might be a little bit of overlap between the the different groups and communities, uh, but it's it sounds like Capsule is a lot more advanced than what the Kubernetes community has. So, um, yeah, maybe this is a, you know something to think about. Maybe when when you go into you you're currently in Sandbox, right? The PNCF, right? Yeah, yeah. We were thinking about sandbox or the next level, but Marcello, do you remember the reason behind that? I don't remember uh, too much things at the same time. I'm really sorry. We had um, to get in contact first with uh, the tag group uh, and then uh, schedule an evaluation from the committee for the sandbox. Yeah, but any reason why we were thinking about the sandbox? Because it was the first level. Yeah. Yeah, it was the first level. There was also another possibility to skip the sandbox, uh, but we were advised to proceed this way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, but it, it sounds like uh, you have already at least two end users. Um, and then as you think about going to the next level, which I think it it makes sense for your project because it has a lot of features. You have all the documentation um, to go into incubation, right? So as you think about that, maybe you think about uh, getting more traction and adding more end users. I think about growing the community and grow and, and continuing to to get more end users and and you might be there in, in incubation, right? So, and I do think it's pretty useful. I think a lot of uh, organizations will find the the features. Okay. So in your opinion, Ricardo, we can also apply for incubation directly. Uh, you could, you could, but uh, I think you might need more end users. I don't know what the, I think maybe they asked for like five or six different end users, right? So, uh, and, and someone from the TOC will actually reach out. When, when you apply for incubation, you create a incubation uh, due diligence document and and you specify some of the end users so so the toc member who is actually sponsoring your project will actually reach out to these end users and interview these end users and and i mean there's two here right so but the yeah keep in mind uh, yeah there are plenty of them because unfortunately um unfortunately well it really depends also on the perspective but uh we know that it's used by several companies and we cannot force them saying, okay, we are using Capture, maybe because our internal constraints or something like that. So it's really hard to find people that say are saying, oh, I'm using that in production. And I can say, oh, feel uh, open a merge request saying that you're using that. Yeah. I don't know the reason, but we know that uh, also big names are using that in production. There is a you might want to wait until they become more public about it or or they feel more comfortable. I do. I mean, for... honestly, I honestly have no idea. Honestly, I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind that the idea also to donate capture to the CNCF is also to get more adoption. And also because in the end, we uh we are seeing that it's a huge framework, you know, uh, it can help uh, other people's lives. So why not donating? So we strongly believe also we are. Keep in mind that Caption was born initially from the classics minds, but we are not opinionated about that. We got customers, classics customers that are using that in production. They try to push us to say Caption would be great if it could do this thing, but we always say no, because we don't want to be driven by customers, but rather driven by the community. We want yeah. to provide... Are, are you the only maintainer for for uh, for this project now, or or so or 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 Max and Max and, uh, and Oliver? They are maintainers. Okay, so from they different maintainers too. So that's do something else to look at. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying, do we have contributors from different companies because that will also be a factor for the NCF. I didn't get the question. Sorry. Uh, do you have contributors from different companies as well? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because Maxim is working from Borgaming, Oliver from Bedag, and I'm working on behalf of Classics. Yeah. So three different companies. Okay. So I think it's in pretty good shape to you. I think it's almost that you could try for incubation. So that would, I would just kind of think about that, right? So or, or do a little bit more. But I mean, that's my my take. Right? So, because that's that's one of the things they look at. They look at they look at multiple maintainers from different organizations. Because they also look at the health of the project. Like if if like one of their if it's a single organization maintaining that project, if that organization is no longer uh, available for some reason, or or they go out of business, then then the project is actually you know there's nobody maintaining the project, right? So they, but if they have multiple organizations, then. The, the the project can sustain itself a little bit better, right? Or yeah, it, 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 can, it, it can survive. So, yeah, it's legit. I'd say. Yeah, yeah and and also maybe in, in the case of clusters, they uh, it will be good to, from the strategic point of view, you you want to have also a business case for your open source project too, so that you can also survive as a company or 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 even thrive as a company and then make the project successful too and healthy uh in, in the open source community right because there if classics is actually investing resources in the project right so you're investing your time people are in, in, in clustics as a company are investing time in this open source project, right? So and that, that actually costs money, right? So it's, it, and, but if Clustix actually is a healthy company, then they can main, invest more time to in, in the open source project. Yeah, keep in mind that also the idea to donate to the CNCF was also to detach from the Clustix ownership to make yeah. totally yeah. driven by the community. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, cool. So anything else, what are the what are the action items on our behalf or your behalf? Uh, I don't know, it's the first time. So oh, everything is new for me. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you could review some of the incubation requirements on the CNCF repo uh, and see how you meet them, right? So, and I, I'm happy to send you the links if, if you don't have them, right? So I think that's, that's one. Uh, the other one is to see if um i don't know if you, you're in sandbox now and see if, if there are any resources uh there's a cnc of help desk and maybe you can ask them for suggestions on how to uh grow the project or or or, or any anything that they can the cnc can help you out with uh with growing the project i, I don't know or you you are going to kubecon maybe in amsterdam and yeah. maybe they'll have some suggestions around that right so a um, um, couple of action items, I think, and you know, reach out to help desk and CNCF and see how they can help out. Um, and also, yeah, the read the incubation criteria. Yeah, yeah, and and also think about. I think a third one would be think about how these uh, end users that are not really forthcoming about the use of the project can become more public about it right but i don't know sometimes that's hard right so but i think sometimes that, that actually takes time you kind of have to reach out to them and maybe develop their relationships with these uh with these end users right so that would be maybe a third action item yeah yeah we're already doing that also along with marcello yeah um so i'd also add to like ricardo you mentioned kubecon the so kubecon also has a maintainer track and if you're already a sandbox project, I think you're eligible for submitting a CFP there. Uh, so something maybe about capsule, like I'm not really sure if sandbox projects are. No, I don't think they are. I don't think they are. So that's why I I because uh, you're if, if you're in incubation, you get more benefits too. You get like uh I think you you get to submit to the maintainer track. Yeah, but uh but um yeah, if you if you're a sandbox, I think you you don't. Uh, so that's why I asked uh, for you to reach out to the CNCF help desk and see how they can help. Uh, Keep in yeah. mind that we got some customers um, yeah. that are classics customers. So I'm talking on behalf of classics that are using caption in production. So we know that 
Uh, they are not going public about that, but we know that. So maybe, uh, I don't know if we can say also along with documentation that we are providing to the CNCF, these are the adopters of Capsule. So you can, you can, if they're public, yeah, 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 it's, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it, it it's a fine line between, you know, uh, open source and, and, and the business side of things, right? So the, 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 the conference uh, organizers don't want the conference to, to be about vendor. And then if there are vendors, they want, they want them to sponsor the company, right? So the, or the, the conference, right? They want, they want, they want you to have a booth and pay for the booth at the, in the conference floor, right? So, so you kind of have to mix and match and, and see what you can do about that, right? So, um, yeah. That's and uh, another question from my side, but Max, Oliver, if you have any, uh, interrupt me, don't worry. Uh, how many, how is going to last uh, the process for incubating and sandboxing to the CNCF? How many days is going to require regarding the due diligence and so on and so forth? I'm just curious about that. It, it really varies with, between the different projects. And it also varies um, in terms of like getting a, a sponsor in the TOC. So like uh, somebody from the TOC needs to kind of step up and uh, again, you need, you'll have to open a, a help desk and in the CNCF and say like, I'm going to apply for, I want to apply for incubation. You also uh, have to open a, a GitHub uh, issue, right? So that's what mm -hmm. how they typically. Uh, we got a sponsor from the TOC. You do already? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that I think it would typically actually take maybe, you know, like three to three to four months or something like that. Yeah. So to go through all the due diligence and, and, and give time to that, for, for that TOC sponsor to, um, to actually reach out to the end users, do interviews and, and tweak the, the due diligence document and review it and, you know, go through maybe a few iterations, right, to, to make sure that everything is is ironed out. Okay. So far, so good. Thanks. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Any, any other questions for Nikita? <laughs> no. All right. Are you all going to KubeCon in, in Amsterdam? Depends on funding. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm asking everybody on this call. Are you are you going to be there or, or okay, cool. We okay. as classics, we are going to be there. Also, we are sponsoring the KubeCon as a startup. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I this this uh presentation is recorded and I'll post it on the CNCF channel. So feel free to reference to it uh, afterwards. And yeah, thank you for joining and yeah, we'll see you around. And 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 then if you want to do any follow-ups or have any questions, uh, you can also ping me on Slack or ping Nikita on Slack. And and you can also send out questions to the Tag Runtime channel. I think uh, uh, Dario, I think you already you know asked some questions there. But but if you have anything else, then feel free. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. Marcelo is going to take care of the follow-up. Yeah. Thank you, Ricardo, for the notes and the action items. We'll okay. keep in touch. Let's wrap yep. up here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. 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 <laughs> <laughs>